Postal voting in the Scottish parliamentary elections starts today. Make both votes count by putting your cross beside the SNP for your local candidate and vote ALBA party on the regional list. Your votes matter. Vote SNP in the constituency and ALBA party on the list. Vote ALBA party for the independent supermajority. Make both votes yes. Accelerate the COVID recovery. Protect everyone's equal rights. Put Scotland's independence at the heart of every policy. Vote ALBA for an independent supermajority. You can register to vote until Monday the 19th of April. Vote SNP locally and ALBA party on the list. Return your postal ballot and stand up for Scotland today. Anyway, the, the reason I'm late, right, is because we were expecting a crowd of 18 at the Falkland Field and 18 come back. So I'm just waiting to see if you beat Central Scotland. One, two, three, four. 81. I hope you're coming because you'll be dedicated over the weekend. In the day. Who's delivered the most leaflets? It's definitely, is that true? It's always the woman. Anyway, what I'm detecting as I go around from mass meeting to mass meeting, well, I'll tell you what I'm detecting. I'm detecting Alipers rising across the country. That's the first thing I'm detecting. And next thing I'm detecting, because, you know, as you know, we're fighting an entirely positive campaign. And you probably noticed that despite all the provocation, I've been entirely positive in every interview I've done. Even on the BBC, I think that was one ago. <laughs> entirely positive. But I have to say, by accident, of course, I was listening to Radio 4 this morning. Oh. And I heard Linda say that she was going to vote against. The Arapa Party resolution to initiate immediate negotiations for independence from Westminster. And I thought to myself, how dare she vote against the resolution proposed by Neil Handy? <laughs> <laughs> and I just got to thinking about it. We've actually reached the stage. Well, firstly, I accept the concession. There's going to be lots of Alapa MSPs there to propose the motion in the first place. Yeah. 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 Well, I just got to think it. Why is it that the leader of the SNP will order of MSPs, and incidentally, you'll be finding over the next few or three days that the number of MSPs wouldn't they take that order, <laughs> to vote against the resolution on independence for Scotland. I mean, is it because that Boris Johnston is so mighty, so invulnerable, so secure in his position, that he could defy the wishes of the Scottish Parliament, the Scottish people? And I mean, that man must be the most powerful prime minister we've ever seen. A puff of wind would blow him over. Talking about thinking, puffs of wind, are you coming to Perth to wind up here? <laughs> I'm staying entirely positive for this entire <laughs> I think the problem with Peter is he's never recovered from his campaign to become Speaker of the House of Cobb. No. I mean, when he couldn't find a seconder among 654, it was a, it was a blow to his morale. <laughs> I'll meet you there. So the position is that Nicola says she wouldn't support that motion. But we can't think. I mean, look, let's be real with it. We all think independence is essential for the health and welfare and the economic uh, position of Scotland. We all think that, yeah? Yeah. yeah? We all think it's a priority. Yeah. We all think it's something that has to be done now. Yes. Something that can't wait. Yeah. Something that's essential for reconstruction of Scotland. We all believe that, yeah? yeah? So why on earth would we wait? to see it implemented. Now, I could understand it if Johnson really was a powerful Prime Minister, but listen, you know, 
if you can turn over David Cameron, which I did in 2012 in the Edinburgh Agreement, and I know Cameron's in a bit of bother, <laughs> <laughs> but at least he looked like a Prime Minister, unlike the present one. If you can exactly. turn over David Cameron, you can certainly turn over Boris Johnston. Yeah. I can't think of a better moment to force Westminster to listen to Scotland's demands. And of course, the other thing about this, if it's a demand that comes from a Scottish Parliament with a super majority of MSPs like Neil and myself supporting independence, if it's clear that it's not a question of Prime Minister against First Minister, Tories against SNP, but Boris Johnston as a Tory Prime Minister against the Scottish Parliament representing the Scottish people, then it will immeasurably strengthen Scotland's hand in terms of the negotiations. Now just because you start negotiations doesn't mean you finish them, but unless you start them, you'll never finish them. <laughs> and I'm not altogether sure what's been happening over the last, I mean it's not, over the last seven years there's been plenty of opportunities, I mean plenty of things have happened to Scotland in the right. last seven years. Brexit for one thing, you would think that these would be the moments that we'd be forcing the issue if indeed we were serious about Scottish independence. So I think Nicholas kind of, how shall I put it, in a positive way, <laughs> lost the place <laughs> as far as independence is concerned. And I think what we'll see over the next week is finding the place as Alapa rises across Scotland. And my last thing to say is this. I heard today that the BBC in Wales, in that gesture towards democratic opinion for which that organisation is so famous, have decided to include the Abolish the Synod party in the leadership debates. So Abolish the Synod, a party that got 2% in the last Welsh elections, is now to be included full scale in the debates on uh, BBC Wales in the run-up to the election and get all the coverage day by day by day in Welsh uh, television and radio and language television and radio as well. Not are they, are they doing that the Abolish the Synod <laughs> is going to be able to speak Welsh incidentally, but nonetheless they'll be in all these platforms. So apparently we have reached a situation with the BBC where if you propose the abolition of the Welsh Assembly, then you're put on the same terms as the other parties. But if, of course, you propose the abolition of the Westminster Parliament, which is what we're doing as far as Scotland is concerned, then you've got to be shut out of the debates. What sort of democratic aspect is that? The BBC have learned nothing from 2014. They are the Bourbons. They will learn absolutely nothing. But I'm going to tell you something else. It's not going to matter. Because I sense what's happening across Scotland just now, and we are going to bypass the BBC and the television and the radio. And incidentally, I should say, although they haven't put me in the debate, at least they had Kenny McCaskill on a programme talking about the debate. <laughs> so I was somewhat interested this morning to receive an invitation to the BBC <laughs> to be interviewed, not in the debate itself, <laughs> but immediately before the debate, just before East Enders. <laughs> and I felt like saying, exactly, they said you'll be able to set the terms of what's to come. And that says the plot of East Enders has been uh, made up. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say, if my reading is right, and I did watch a couple of the other debates, there'll be a damn sight more people watching the programme before East Enders than they'll be watching the debate, so I'll take the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. But I can also tell you the BBC will find out we're doing some other things in the run-up to the debate and immediately afterwards, which might make them regret their attempt to suppress democracy in Scotland. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate thing is this, that each and every one of you has it in their hands to turn over that broadcasting ban. Because if we hit home in the streets and communities of Scotland, then what the BBC have been trying to do to us won't matter. Because they'll be having an inquiry for the next 10 years about their attempt to suppress Alapa in this campaign. Yeah. I would just like to say this. I. Uh, I know this man uh, extremely well, and I've got to know him even better in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, I admire lots of things in politics, 
but the thing I admire most is guts and gumption. Neil's got both a plenty. Uh, it takes quite something. I mean, I saw when I was busy arguing with Ofcom the other day, they said, oh, well, uh, one of your uh, MPs, of course, your MPs were elected on an SNP ticket. I said, no one can call you <laughs> and me for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> it takes quite something to be elected without a party machine. But of course, the machine that Neil had is in front of me today. You're the machine. And it's the same people's machine that will take Alapa to victory in this election. And we intend to have MSPs the length and breadth for Scotland. Neil and I intend to be proposing that motion that Nicola so worried about in two weeks' time. And we intend to make sure that nobody is going to be able to deny the voice of the Scottish people as we seek national independence. Because the reality is this. Alapa is rising across yep. Scotland. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, we've been a bit, we've been a bit busy. Is it money? As you guys by notes. Get it notified to the electoral commission first. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alec. Um, it's a, it's a, an enormous honour for me, and the uh, folk who know me well will know how important and special this moment is to me. Um, uh, to have a political hero of so many people even know your name is, uh, is a, a wonderful thing. So thanks, Alec. I, I really do appreciate your, your, your kind words and your time today. Um, but on the, I think it was the 30th of November uh, 2019, there was a wee group of us, many of you are here, uh, and turned up on a Sunday morning to stand up for what we believe which was right, and that was that the people of Kirkcaldy and County Faith deserve to have the right to vote for an independent support MP, and they did, and I'm still here, and I am still fighting for independence. That's what I was elected to do. Yeah. And whether I, um, uh, how I do that and the party I align myself with to achieve that will be, de de will de be determined by the, um, the spirit of that party. And when the, the party that uh, I found myself back in um, chooses to stifle um, any discussion within the parliamentary group on the main objective of the party's existence, then that is not a party that I want to belong to any longer. Um, because uh, my objective, uh, I said this to Alex the other day, my objective is to be the last MP for Kirkcaldy and County Beef. That's why I stood, that's why I could take um, uh, It remains my ambition. Now, if, uh, if it, the questions are, it's an enormously proud moment for me to be the first MP to ask a question. Westminster on behalf I saw of the Alpha Party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, drop that down. Um, on, a, on a list of firsts that seems to be growing, which has is, which is, um, been good fun, although Kenny got first MP for Alpha, so I'll, I'll give that concession. <laughs> um, that's not bad, it's one of my other political heroes, so I, I'll, I'll let him off. But, you know, I think the spirit of that question was really about laying down a much more, much more bold uh, approach to Westminster, not to be playing the Westminster game and citing their statistics at them and saying, oh, you know, let's dance on the head of a pin. It's about saying to them that Scotland will not be uh, treated in the way that we've been treated and that we're going to push for our independence and we will negotiate. We will lay down that proposition. We will start those discussions and we will take as many of the parliamentary groups with us as we possibly can because that spirit exists in many SNP candidates right now and they are as frustrated as many of us are uh, uh, with the inaction uh, towards independence. I know that certainly in the, the parliamentary group in Westminster that there are, are uh, MPs who are frustrated. They need the courage to step forward 
to join the movement that they represent, which is the independence movement. It's much bigger than any party. It's never been about an individual. And that is the, whilst, you know, uh, Alec is a, 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 a real beacon of hope for many of us and has led the movement over so many years and continues to do so uh, to this day, uh, it is the... Uh, it is the movement, it is the people of Scotland that uh, are the force behind our independence. Uh, and uh, some people would do well to remember that this is not about personalities. This is about Scotland. Um, and we all know that. And we will continue to fight for that. And we will prevail. Um, so I, I'm very grateful to Alec. I'm very grateful to everybody for coming down today. It's been a great show of strength. And, um, you know, I'm really very optimistic for our success uh, next Thursday. So well done, everyone. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> now, this lovely thing is a poem by Hugh McDermott. The rose of all the world is not for me. For my part, I wish only the little white rose of Scotland, which smells sharp and sweet and breaks the heart. I once had the opportunity to meet Hugh McDermott. Uh, it owned Dudley Edwards fixed up, but I was at St Andrews University. To my shame, I went to Harps Hibbs Derby instead. My <laughs> <laughs> hair's got beat. <laughs> I know I should have gone to meet him and <laughs> line him. But uh, it's one of his most beautiful verses. But I can tell you what, and thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, but it's not our hearts that are going to be broken next week. It's the hearts of unionists in Scotland because they know that Alapa is coming. Thank you very much. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Does Andy, it's uh, Alex Armand here. I've just been asked by Jackie, Jackie to say a word to you. Now, 
I hope the weather in France is a bit better than this in Caponi. It's a wee bit parky here. <laughs> and if it continues like this for the next week in terms of the weather, I might join you for a bit of post-campaign recuperation. Once all this bad stuff is over, so uh, keep uh, keep some of the uh, keep some of the red wine for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get a This is guy looking at Look, if you like the three, two, one thing, very, very professional. David Bailey is Okay, I got mine with you in Dundee the other day there, so. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you like so. <laughs> <laughs> <There's my girl. laughs> he knows more than you. No, 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 she knows what she's doing. Remember when you were here is it for is it not the